Hello, and welcome to the Botanus Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And today, we're going to talk about spring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Barely touched his fall. <laughs> I know. And it seems so weird, doesn't it? I yeah, mean, it seems weird to be talking about the spring and we're in the fall and we but still have to go point. through. Uh, yeah, that's exactly. the point. That right? is exactly the point. Mm -hmm. We need to be planting our spring flowering bulbs in the fall because you can't be planting them in the spring. It's way too late. It's too late. Mm -hmm. uh, every spring when all these beautiful spring flowers are blooming, that's when you remember uh -huh. the job you didn't do that. in the fall. And uh, we are here right. to remind you of that. That's right. <laughs> and it's so funny because we often get uh, calls from customers saying, oh, I just, I have no more room for bulbs. What am I going to do? Uh, and, uh, and we say, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> yes, you do. Because that's actually what we're going to talk about is one of the areas that's often neglected or just ignored in your yard. And that is planting flower bulbs under trees. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have big trees uh, in their yard mm -hmm. and they don't really like it's basically this is the tree area and this is where I have my flowers right. uh, and they kind of miss out on a very cool area mm -hmm. we, we think it's a very uh, interesting area because it also makes it very natural looking mm -hmm. when you integrate your trees and don't just separate them from your area mm -hmm. um, with um, yeah, like you have basically the trees the big tree area and then you integrate some flowers yeah. in that part of yeah. it so it just it, looks very it natural. makes it looks more natural exactly mm -hmm. and I know that when you do your floral displays that's what you're all about is that kind of woodland natural look and it's so easy to create uh, the one thing that you want to make sure is that they're going to be getting some sunlight mm -hmm. in the spring yeah and you know you want it to be uh, uh, you want it to be a little drier yes and you want it to be well draining mm -hmm. well trees are under trees is a perfect situation yeah and that's that. the kind of the myth of the tree uh, mm -hmm. situation people say well you know I have tree it's too dark it's mm -hmm. too shady but the important thing is that you have deciduous trees right. that are or the leaves are not out at the right. time when your flower bulbs come up right I mean, that's really the, the trick. exactly yeah. and we were talking we were talking earlier about the deciduous trees and the leaves well remember the, all those leaves that you're raking up around this time <laughs> of year it's those trees we're talking about those are the ones that you want to plant under because as Elka said they don't leaf out until later in the the spring and early summer and that means lots of sunlight coming through mm -hmm. now evergreens a different story yeah unless you know some some are very uh, established very tall trees yeah. which uh, have the branches very high right works too so that, that you know too. you kind of have to watch the sunlight or the mm -hmm. light in general how much light comes through the trees right. uh, maybe it's you know it's like on 12 o'clock at noon there is it's very shady because mm -hmm. the sun is right on top of the plants mm -hmm. but uh, you know watch it and don't just cut them out as it's not an area for my plants right right and of course you'll want to be choosing smaller bulbs just because you know you can plant lots of them underneath and they won't be getting in the way or competing with the tree roots in any way in terms of just planting they're certainly not going to compete with a, a well-established tree because yeah. they don't need <laughs> that much yeah. um, and you'll want to choose naturalizers naturalizer yes they look natural yeah <laughs> and uh, it, it's a one-time planting you know it's it really it gets better every year because mm -hmm. they multiply usually and yeah. uh, they just look lovely so you don't have to dig every year between That's your tree right. roots it's just easy we want easy people easy that's what we want and of course you will also want to choose bulbs that are considered early bloomers because of course as we said the earlier they bloom the more chance they're going to be getting some sunlight um, and you and and of course it's that early spring color that we're looking exactly. for we want yeah. to look out yeah. our our windows and see those trees and see those beautiful bulbs underneath and in, in their full glory in the full glory yeah. right. and, and uh, maybe check out some plants that like shade half like partial yeah, shade right. to shade mm -hmm. uh, we have in the botanist catalog everything is marked with like it's have a, has a nice symbol of shade or, or partial shade mm -hmm. so those are uh, the, the better one because they're also not quite so affected by the trees right right and of course the last tip of course is to plant lots <laughs> you know especially when you've got a big tree or a fairly well established tree and you have some plantings underneath with blooms you want to be able to see those plantings and the great thing is a lot of times these smaller bulbs are 
are less expensive. So you can buy lots of them mm -hmm. and plant them in those beautiful groupings. In groupings, yeah. yeah because exactly. the ma it's the mass planting mm -hmm. that makes the look of these. You know, like when you look onto, uh, in those fields and you see just like a yeah. shimmer of blue or yellow or whatever the color mm -hmm. is, yeah. uh, it's th they, they are not, it's not the same thinking. When you have the full, the full um, size mm -hmm. bulbs of a tulip or a daffodil or something that is like the full size, then you usually go for the showstopper look. Right. You know, it's like five bulbs and it has to be really big in in the naturalizing plantings mm -hmm. uh, it's more like the mass and it's right. like that shimmer that you see from fraud right. right exactly well i think we've wet your whistle enough let's get into <laughs> some actual varieties that we offer that would be perfect for planting under trees of course when we think of spring my first thought is daffodils, yeah, narcissi, absolutely. and we have great choices in our minis and our dwarfs. We're going to talk about a couple of the rock garden varieties and we're going to kick it off with Pacific Coast. <laughs> Such a beautiful daffodil and it's multi-flowering which is really great. Meaning yeah, I love that. You get lots of stems with lots of blooms so it's it's considered a very a very prolific bloomer and it's got a pretty yellow on yellow tone and mm -hmm. I, I don't know it's just a, a really lovely one to grow because of course as we said you want that mass look and this is going to give it to you even in just one bulb although you're going to plant more than one bulb but you're going to get lots and lots of flowers with this particular rock garden variety. Yeah to totally cute. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. a cute it's a very cute one. Yeah. Um, um, as also as the, the Golden Echo is mm -hmm. also a little daffodil. Uh, both of those varieties are more on the taller side, I yeah. would say yeah, 10 inches. 10 to 14 of. inches high. Yeah. They're not really, really short, but they're not your standard size. But uh, but they have smaller flowers. Mm -hmm. So again, um, b uh, Pam's variety has this um, this nice multi-flowering. Yes. The Golden Echo is more like the classic daffodil look, yeah. but in mini. It has, mm -hmm. a, has a nice white petals and a, a cute little yellow cup. It's yeah. just adorable. Right. Right. And I love that name Golden Echo because it kind of, it's true, the, the yellow sort of echoes onto the white petals. It's a real stunner. I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's a beautiful narcissi. It's very pretty. You could mix those two together under a cut tree. Flower. Yeah. Gold cut flower. Yeah, gold cut flower. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you go lower and you say, mm -hmm. no, you know, I don't, I don't need some, some very tall plants there. I need something more ground cover-ish. Mm -hmm. And muscari, as much as they are in our flower beds, often used as cut flowers. Uh, as, as um, ground covers, yes. they are perfect under trees too. Yes. Uh, baby's breath is mm -hmm. the one that I really like because it's a very, uh, it's a very soft color, yeah. really baby blue. Yeah, it's with cool. A, with a cute little, um, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, I think it's described as sweetly scented. Yes, sweetly scented. Of course, you'd be happy going out there under your trees <laughs> to smell <laughs> the <laughs> sweetness. But as Elka said too, if you plant enough, you could always snip a one or two and bring mm -hmm. them inside and put them in a little vase. But they'll also stand out because they are that light color. Now, you could actually mix your baby's breath with another type of muscari that is really wonderful, and that's called Big Smile. Mm -hmm. And I love the name of this, because I remember when we first grew it yeah. and tried it, we wondered, why is it called Big Smile? It looks like your standard, nar you know, uh, muscari, muscari mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, it's nice sort of purpley blue color. Well, it's Big Smile because it just continues to elongate and elongate and elongate. It gets quite tall, the flower head, and it's very, very pretty. And very fragrant which yeah. was completely unexpected like we may be, we mm -hmm. were not I mean we know that there's muscaris that are uh, that have a very lovely fragrance yeah. but this one was really unexpected mm -hmm. it was very fragrant and mm -hmm. uh, we like when you walk by you go like mm -hmm. What's where that? does that come from yeah. because you don't really think of muscari as that fragrant yeah, yeah. and they're so lovely. easy to grow you know really it's just muscari are just wonderful yeah um now we'll move on to some tulips now of course why not tulips? yeah tulips <laughs> well specifically the mini botanical tulips now these are bulbs they're so cute when you order them you get them you'll see it's kind of like you know you remember that movie somebody shrunk the kids it's like somebody <laughs> shrunk the bulbs it's like these little tiny mini tulip bulbs they're just adorable yeah. and they make a great kind of ground cover under a tree exactly exactly and the Kaufmanniana water lily mm -hmm. is actually an interesting one because it is th that kind of a bulb is a little bit more like the regular tulip bulb mm -hmm. just smaller it mm -hmm. looks like oh it's a little undersized but it's not yeah. it's, it doesn't have the little miniature look mm -hmm. like all the other miniature uh, miniature tulips mm -hmm. but it is a smaller bulb and it's uh, easy to to grow too mm -hmm. it's just a lovely plant and the Kaufmanniana water water lily tulip, mm -hmm. okay, you say that 10 times faster. Yes, that's hot. <laughs> um, it's, it's just gorgeous because it has a relatively big 
flower head for a miniature tulip. Yes. Uh, and it opens up like a real star. It has yeah. a very soft yellow, it's almost like an off white to yellow yeah, petal creamy. and a really nice yellow center. And it's mm -hmm. it's a big size. So it's a, it's a very good one that um, under trees because mm -hmm. you see it from far and it looks like it's kind of floating, like a water lily floating oh, on your oh, soil. So yeah. it's just lovely opening as a star and it also closes yeah. at night. In and it has that cool mottled foliage, which is kind of green with a sort of a bird burgundy striations in it. It's yeah, very, yeah. very interesting. A really great one to grow. Of course, the Saxatillus. <laughs> oh, that is such a fun looking tulip. It really looks like an Easter egg. It's got <laughs> it the does. Easter egg colors. It's got that, you know, and it's almost bowl shaped, you know, beautiful pink petals with that bright yellow center. Really, really cute. A real standout. Again, remember when you're planting under trees, they're a little potentially a little further out in your art yard. You want to plant something that kind of catches your eye. Yeah, sort of, exactly. Ooh, what's that? That looks really neat. Yeah, um, I, I think, of course, all of these uh, choices mm -hmm. are also obviously related to what you like, what um, what's your taste in color, more pink, more mm -hmm. yellow. Uh, important is the partial shade to, right. to, to sun. sun yeah. Of, yeah, from between half, partial shade to shade is, mm -hmm. is, is the best. These are good examples, but right. I mean, there's no limit. There's tons more yeah. in the catalog for you to choose so from. So much more. We're just, we just literally the tip of the iceberg <laughs> uh, in terms of what you can do. And of course, when you actually get around to planting, now you've chosen your bulbs, how do you plant them? Just like any other bulb, you, of course you want use a, a smaller tool to dig an individual hole. Um, I like to think that we would amend the soil under the yes, trees because yeah. trees do draw a lot of nutrients out of the soil. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. how can you best do that? Well, it depends on how big and established the trees are. There's literally areas that are completely rooted mm -hmm. and it's hard to get in. Mm -hmm. But that's why we use the smaller bulbs. And you use a trowel, a small trowel, mm -hmm. or we have the hori hori knife right. that is a good knife. And you just kind of dig in mm -hmm. and then you wiggle it around a bit. Mm -hmm. You can use so, um, uh, sand to mm -hmm. a, a man, just throw it right on top of right. your grass and on your grassy good area. Drainage. Sometimes if it's a grassy area, I right. mean, it's even under the trees, often mm -hmm. maybe grassy then you can lift the sod, you can uh, yeah, use some compost. I right. mean, it, there's many different ways to just yeah. kind of... It's just a general it. rule. It's not just for planting under trees, but generally that's what you want to be doing. But under trees, because trees do draw a lot of nutrients yeah. out of the soil. Yeah. And of course, how do you plant? Well, what kind of look are you going for? If you're going for that natural look, you literally kind of just want to drop them. Uh, and plant them where they and, land. And yeah. plant them where they mm -hmm, land. Mm -hmm. Or do groupings. Yeah. Um, you know, don't try to do the ring around the tree kind of thing. Well, I don't want to tell anybody what to do. <laughs> but that... It's not the natural It look, doesn't look natural. Yeah. It, looks, mm -hmm. it looks a bit staged. And... Yeah, maybe not the best, but again, it's up to you. If that's what you want to do, you go for it. Yeah, but natural um, look is like what nature right. would do if if it would pot, pot, pop, <laughs> pop the seeds, mm -hmm. and the seeds land wherever they land, that's and right. that's where the plant comes mm -hmm. up. And that's when you have a handful of small bulbs, you drop them, mm -hmm. and they just kind of roll around, and right. that's where you plant right. them. And our last tip for you actually has to do, again, going back to amending the soil and giving them a good start, is you might want to consider using a type of uh, top dressing of fertilizer. And we do carry uh, the Actisol, which is a really great product. It comes from Quebec and it is actually dried hen manure. And I know that sounds hmm, odd. <laughs> I can assure you it doesn't smell. It actually, yeah, that's, that's, cool, that's, that's the really cool thing about it. Um, it's organic. It can be used for organic gardens and it's very easy uh, to apply because you just simply open this milk carton, which is also waterproof, so you can mm -hmm. actually leave it outside. You open it up, you just sprinkle a little bit of the Actisol, it'll tell you how much to use per square meter, and that's it. The it rain... Will, it, yeah, it will release every time exactly. it, you water your plant so it's raining. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. So it's a great product, and uh, you know, it comes in this nice big size, so you can use it. You can use it anywhere in your garden, but we, I like it because it's easy, and that goes back to what we first talked about. Easy peasy. We just want it to be easy and enjoyable and fun. And planting these little bulbs under trees in the fall, once you've raked away those leaves, is going to be very easy. Exactly, and you will thank us that yeah. we reminded you this <laughs> fall because next spring it's going to be a nice show. That's right, it's, it's just going to be flowers, flowers, It will be flowers. worth the effort. Right. Okay, well, get your thinking caps on now, people, because we're going to be asking you our question of the week in the Botanist Garden Club. We ask a question, you send us the answer, we do a draw for prizes, and again, easy peasy. <laughs> so, this week's question is, what type of tree is best for bulb plantings? Hmm. 
I think we talked about that, didn't we, Elka? Did we? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely did. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to do a draw, but you need to send your answer to that question to gardenclub at botanis.com with your name and the answer. And then tomorrow we'll do a draw. And what exactly. are we going to give away? We're going to have three winners. Mm -hmm. And each winner gets a $10 Botanis gift card. Awesome. Great. Perfect. OK. Well, as I said, get your thinking caps on. Start thinking about where you want to plant those little bulbs under trees in your yard, if you have some, or along the boulevard. Ha! How about that? <laughs> Help the city or the township out uh -huh. with your uh, plantings. That would be a great idea. Exactly. And yeah. then you can tell all your guests, you know, you don't have to stop. I'm living where those fabulous plants are. The That's fabulous. right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Okay, everyone, get out there and garden away and uh, look forward to the spring, of course. Enjoy the fall as well. It's a lovely time of year. And we'll see you next week in the Botanist Garden Club. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.